God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church, and I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. For prayer or information concerning our ministry, please email us at abundant.grace at att. Net. Today we will continue with our message series titled The Jigsaw Puzzle of Life in Christ. This will be part two. Today we will open up with 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. My beloved, we are in the last days. The last days started with Jesus Christ. So what type of Christians should we be, knowing that we are in the last days? We should be Christians that are about our Savior's business. My beloved, know that God has saved us and given us a ministry. We have our own personal ministry, and that is to go out into the world and preach the gospel. As Christians, it is not just to sit around and wait to lead this life, or just to go to church and to have fellowship. It is to do the work of the ministry. My beloved, we are kept, which means our inheritance is reserved. Jesus Christ, through giving his life, has made us inheritors, and we are going to heaven when we leave this life. But we have work to do. Christ left us an example of how we are to conduct ourselves and what we are to do for him. And we are kept by the power of God, which works in all which guards us against all of our enemies. No matter what, God protects us. God has us in the palm of his hand. And this is all through faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must trust in the word of God and believe it by faith. Salvation alone comes through faith. And our salvation is retained. And no one can take our salvation. It is eternal. And all these things are ready to be revealed. That revelation is made in the last day. It was more and more ready to be revealed ever since Christ came into this world. So I'm, I'm going to give you some main points concerning God's purposes and steps for your life. The purpose of God for your life is a big jigsaw puzzle with lots of pieces. I don't know how many pieces because each person has a different amount of pieces in their puzzle. God gives us work to do, and he only gives us the work that we are able to complete. He only gives us the work that we are capable of doing. Now, understand this, that our work or the puzzle, let me put it that way, is completed one piece at a time. God shows you the end result first, which is heaven or hell. So, certain things have to be done to go to heaven. Nothing has to be done to go to hell. The bigger the purpose, the larger the puzzle, or the greater number of pieces. So let's talk about how to put your puzzle together, how to complete it, in other words. You must start by looking at the end result. You must start with the first piece, which means you must start off with a fresh objective. It may look like a mess when you dump all the pieces of the puzzle on the table or on the floor, but this is necessary to begin to assemble it. Continually keep a vivid picture of the puzzle in your mind. Heaven or hell, okay? Never forget, when you die, you will either go to heaven or hell. There's no other place. There's no in between. Take your time and don't rush, because if you do, you may move ahead of God and get into a state of anxiety or resent. Work according to God's plan. Seek God for what he has for you to do. Don't try to run off and do it yourself and get ahead of God. God opens doors and God closes doors according to his plan and his purpose. Don't try to outthink or outdo God. Set boundaries in your life, my beloved. As a starter to assembling the puzzle of life, it is very important that you set boundaries. So you must start with assembling the outer border of the puzzle, which is the easiest to do. And it protects you from losing any pieces. And is the next important thing next to seeing the finished product. Okay? Start with the outer border all the way around. You must protect your inner person, my beloved. Your heart, mind, spirit, and soul. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. My beloved, it says, wherefore, laying aside. See, we are to cast off 
these things entirely that hinder us from completing the puzzle. And we are no longer to practice them. We need to get rid of them, get rid of the things of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pleasures of life that are outside the bounds of the word of God. But to get rid of all malice, which is evil of all types, it will. Personal gratification, revenge. Well, to get rid of all guile, which means all deceit. Well, are to get rid of all hypocrisies. That means pretending to be what we are not. Assuming a false appearance. We are to get rid of all envies. Hatred of others on account of some excellency which they have or something which they possess, which we do not. All evil speaking, backbiting, slanderous speaking against others. See, if you desire to finish completely the jigsaw puzzle, you must not allow any of these emotions or traits to affect your goal in life, which is going to heaven by completing the word that God has set before you to do. The word. When you read the word, the word says, go and make disciples. So complete the word of God. Complete the word that he gives you. The word that signifies what he has for you to do. Let your life's work stem from the word of God. So do you have a fire desire to complete the jigsaw puzzle of life? I do. And I hope that you do also after listening to this message series. See, my beloved, every piece of your life is important just as every piece of the puzzle. No piece can be missing or the puzzle will not be complete. You must do your best in completing the puzzle. You must do the building yourself. No one else can complete it for you. God sends you, but uses others to encourage you. But you must listen to the word of God through the Holy Spirit. No one can accept Jesus Christ on your behalf. You can only do that to get to heaven. So study the word of God. And you must do this to the praise and glory of God. Seek God. Get into your prayer closet. Pray. No one can study the word of God for you. Yes, you can be in class, have teacher, have Bible studies, but you must do your own thing because God has a special plan. He doesn't have the same plan for everyone. Everyone doesn't have the same ministry. Not everyone is a preacher. Not everyone is a teacher. Not everyone is an evangelist. Not everyone is a minister. We all have our own calling. Don't try to build on someone else's calling. Don't look to someone else and desire their gifts. Don't try to minister like somebody else. Be what God has called you to be. See, there are going to be too many voices out there. And these, these many voices will confuse or hamper your goal in life if you listen to them. Just because you say something good, somebody might say, why, well, you need to be a preacher. Or just because you can, let's say, read the, the Bible well, why, well, you, you need to be a pastor of a church. Just because you have an esteemed position on your job, that doesn't mean that you can be an apostle or a bishop in a church. We all have our own gifts, our own calling. And we need to operate in that area of our gifts and our calling. One of the main things is never get stale, my beloved. Always keep trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Don't ever lose your focus. Don't take your eyes off of Christ, my beloved. Don't take your eyes off of the calling that God has for you. Don't lose your focus or interest in completing your jigsaw puzzle. Never lose your focus. You may get discouraged, but continue on. Pray fast. Seek God for answers. Another thing is make sure that you complete the puzzle. Don't let anything deter you from completing your puzzle. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 says, from the King James Version, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And the Bible in basic English says it real good. I have made a good fight. I have come to the end of my journey. I have kept the faith. Continue to believe no matter what is happening, no matter what obstacles you face. Keep the faith. Believe. 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 Walk by faith, not by sight. Don't walk by what you see, but walk by faith. And that faith should be in Jesus Christ, knowing that he will protect you. He will keep you. He has a place for you in heaven. He has blessings. He has rewards for you. He loves you. He died for you. 
You are covered in his blood. Don't let anything distract you from these facts, okay? God promised us that we will see the puzzle completed in this life for his praise and glory and for all eternity. My beloved, read the words in red. Please, don't ever skip over them. I know many like to read the Old Testament, the Psalms, the Proverbs. Many like to read just the epistles. But read the words in red, my beloved. They are powerful. They are sharper than any two-edged sword. Always read the words in red, the words of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. The words of the one that died for you. The words of the one that covered you in his precious shed blood. Build now, my beloved. Now and finish now in this life. And hear the Lord say, come on in or enter in or come on up hither, my good and faithful servant. My beloved, a few closing words. As you start to work on your life's puzzle, you are going to face many distractions from Satan, who is going to put obstacles in your way to deter you from completing your puzzle. I call these roadblocks, and there are many roadblocks in the way, but you must be focused. Stay focused. Recognize the source of the distractions and stay focused on the task at hand. Always seek God for direction and keep focus. As Paul told Timothy at the end of his life, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. My beloved, I pray that you will be able to say the same words as the Apostle Paul at the end of your life. Don't allow anything to get in the way of your calling from God through Jesus Christ. Start and completely finish your jigsaw puzzle of life in Jesus. And do it for the praise and glory of God and Jesus Christ. My beloved, finish, finish, finish. Strive, strive. Continue on. When you fall, get up. When you fail, don't look back at your failures. Build on your failures. Enhance what you are doing. Don't make the same mistake twice. Don't feel unworthy. Don't let Satan fool you and lie to you that you need to give up, that you won't amount to anything. But listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit that says, go on, go on, go on. You can make it, you can make it, you can make it. You will complete it, you will complete it. You're going to heaven. See, my beloved, once you come to Jesus Christ, accept him as your Savior and Lord, you have eternal life, and no one can steal it from you. No one can take it from you. You have it for all eternity, forever and ever and ever. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Continue to run the race of eternal life. And at the end of your life, you will be able to say, as Paul did, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. You will be able to say, I have completed my puzzle. My jigsaw puzzle is completed. My beloved, some people don't want to be bothered with a puzzle. They would rather spend their time on filthy lucre, sexual immorality, crime, pleasures, sensual pleasures, and they will end up in hell. Remember, the end of the puzzle is either heaven or hell. Many may do a few pieces and give up, but a true Christian will continue to go on until the end. As I said earlier, you don't know how many pieces are in your puzzle. There could be five pieces, could be a thousand pieces, but know that God has given you the stamina, the strength, and the vision to complete the puzzle that he has set before you. If you have never received Christ as your Savior and Lord, my beloved, I want to lead you in a prayer. This prayer is so very important. It is the most important prayer that you will ever pray in your life. It's the prayer of salvation. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you must repent of your sins. You must be sorry for your sins. You must believe that Jesus Christ was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. You must believe that. My beloved, there is no other way to get to heaven but through repentance. You can't get to heaven through a church, through your parents, through good works. You can only get to heaven through Jesus Christ. And if you like to go to heaven, I want to lead you in a prayer. If you haven't ever received Christ, please pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today and it touched my heart. The jigsaw puzzle of life in Christ. I never looked at it from that perspective. Now I see. I was blind, Lord, to the fact of who you are. I thought I was going to heaven because I was a good person or I belonged to a church. 
But today I found out that I cannot get to heaven that way. I must receive, Father God, your Son, Jesus Christ, as my Savior and Lord. I believe today that Jesus Christ is your Son, that He was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. Is now sitting at your right hand in a place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. I believe it with all my heart. I'm sorry for sinning against you all my life, but I know that I'm sorry. And you know I'm sorry because you know my heart. And you know I would be repenting to you today. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for covering me in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Lead me, teach me, guide me, and use me for your praise and glory. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer, you truly repented, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. You are now a Christian. You are now my brother in Christ or sister in Christ. Now what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church when that preaches from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation not excluding anything. Get an audience with that pastor and tell him what happened. He may ask you to repent again. That's fine. Ask him to anoint you with oil to pray with you, to pray for you. Ask him to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you, teach you, lead you, and guide you. Ask him to give you a Bible if you have not one. Ask him to put you in a new beginner's class. My beloved, he will do that because he belongs to God and wants to see you grow, and wants souls to come into the kingdom of God. Then what I would like you to do is email us and tell us what happened. You may email us at abundant.grace at att.net. You can email us through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. You can continue to watch us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, any other media social media outlets. But please, follow us and let us hear from you. Or you can just Google us if it's easy. You can Google Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian or my name, Bishop Ramon de Maria. And our ministry things will come up. If you are in the Midlothian area, you can listen to our radio stations here and get all the information. We're on AM and FM. AM 1650 and FM 92.9. So please let me hear from you. God bless you, my beloved. Keep listening and walk with God. Amen.